Uh, hello everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about interface and settings of Layer Factory and different small things that are outside of the scope of uh, what the panel actually does. So after installing the extension and reopening Photoshop, you'll find the panel in Window Extensions Layer Factory. During the first launch, the panel will show a helper that will give you some general advices about the panel. That all the models are in the main area of the panel, that there is a bottom menu and uh, there is a flyout menu. Clicking anywhere on the panel will hide this overlay. The panel can be docked and minimized as uh, any other panel of Photoshop. The panel can be assigned to a keyboard shortcut and quickly hidden or revealed. I will talk about this later in the video. First the models. Their factory consists of different separate modules that can be hidden if they are not used. There are two types of models on the panel. List models for adding layers and square models for everything else. Clicking on any item of the list model will create a new layer or adjustment layer and clicking on a square model will show a context menu for this model functions. You can change what items are visible in the list models by clicking this list icon in the bottom menu or select list models items in the flyout menu. Then simply toggle visibility of the items you want. Clicking any item in the list will create a new layer, but what gives these models much more power is click modifiers. If you hold Ctrl on Windows or Command on Mac and click an item, it will be clipped to an active layer. If several layers are selected, copy for each one will be created. Next is a shift modifier. If you have a selection and hold shift while clicking an item, the selection will be used as a layer mask. If there is no selection, a layer will be created with a neutral color option turned on that is available for some of the blending modes. This is useful when you want to add the noise on an overlay layer, for example. You can create an overlay with neutral gray in one click. And I'll click inverses the value of click to close option that I will talk about later. All the modifiers can be combined together to create a clipped layer with a mask, for instance. Another small thing particular to the layers module is that if you click a layer with the right mouse button, current layer will be changed to the blending mode of the button you've clicked. By default, all the functions of square models are hidden in context menus. This allows for a cleaner look and also doesn't look too intimidating. However, for quicker access it is possible to expand the square module and show all its functions. This can be done from the bottom menu using this cog button or from the flyout menu. In this settings window, you can change the visibility of models or set square models to expanded state. If there are several models are hidden, they are still accessible through the storage in the bottom menu. Uh, by default, the panel stays open when you use its functions. However, it's possible to set an option to close the panel on click. In conjunction with assigning the panel to a hotkey, this allows for a very robust workflow when the panel stays hidden, brought by a hotkey when needed, and then automatically closes upon use. Uh, Alt plus click on any button will reverse the option. So if you have the option turned on, and you need to create two adjustment layers, for instance. Uh, you alt-click the first one, the panel stays, and then clicking the second one will close the panel. All functions of the bottom menu except for storage are accessible from the fly flyout menu. It's also possible to show models as tabs and turn the models on and off one by one. Note that the flyout menu isn't available in the oldest Photoshop. Keyboard shortcuts can be assigned from the panel flyout menu or directly from Photoshop. To assign them from the panel, in the flyout menu click Assign Hotkeys. Select a model and a function, click Assign and then type a key and select a key modifier. At the moment I have the panel assigned to Ctrl1 and if I want to change that to F1 for instance, I'll just type F and then 1. This hotkey was already assigned, so I'll get this warning which I'll ignore. Note that you can't assign a key that's not supported by Photoshop, for example, light plus something. If you want to assign an unassignable key, you'll need to use something like HK for Windows or Keyboard Maestro for Mac. After you're done, pressing Save will show you this dialog. Don't worry about it, you can just click to show again and click yes or no, it doesn't really matter. Now when I hit F1, the panel toggles on and off. From the Assign Shortcuts window, it's also possible to send functions to Brush Router if you have it installed. Brush Router is my other Photoshop extension panel that allows to have buttons for calling brushes, menu items, tools, actions and scripts. 
So after clicking send to brush router, I can choose the panel and the name I want it to be. And after reloading the panel, the button will appear in the top left corner, from which I can move it whenever I want and maybe assign a custom thumbnail. To assign keyboard shortcuts directly from Photoshop, open and edit keyboard shortcuts window. Then in menu items, navigate to file, scripts and find a bunch of items with LF prefix. From here you can assign keys as you normally would. Uh, and this sums up the panel introduction. To read about the functionality of particular models, check the panel manual and let me know if you have any questions or if you want me to talk about any specific subject. Have a good day!